All right, in the last video, we learned how to use the, the standard reduction potential table to calculate the voltage of cells at standard conditions. Well, we said that, um, <laughs> that volts are joules per coulomb, which means there's an energy component to this, and it's based on reactions being spontaneous, so in theory, it's still related to all the stuff in the previous chapter, which is the delta G stuff. I'm just gonna give you the equation. We're not gonna derive anything here but it's literally just some algebra. It turns out that delta G for any given reaction that is a voltaic cell is negative N F E sub cell. So let me label all of these things so that you know what it is. So delta G is Gibbs free energy, we've seen that. Gibbs free energy is in joules or kilojoules, whatever. In this case, it's going to need to be in joules. Negative sign is hopefully self-explanatory. N is the number of moles of electrons in the balanced reaction. So you remember at the very beginning of this chapter when we learned how to balance half reactions? Um, yeah, we need that, you know, we had to scale up the electrons to cancel it out. That N value is how many electrons they needed to cancel out. F is something called Faraday's constant. Uh, Faraday was some physicist guy obsessed with electricity, came up with this constant. It comes out to 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And N is moles of electrons, so it cancels out nicely. And then this is the voltage. So basically whatever your cell potential is based off table 19.1. And the units on that are volts, which is, which I guess I'll do it like that, which is a joule per coulomb. So your coulombs will cancel out, your moles will cancel out, and you'll end up with joules. Okay. So let's try that same example that we keep doing over and over again. Let's just follow it through here. Zinc solid, zinc 2 plus aqueous, copper 2 plus aqueous, copper solid. And we said in the last video that the cell potential for this at standard conditions is 1.10 volts. It's a positive value. Okay, it's, it's got a positive voltage. Sorry, my handwriting's drifting up here today, but whatever. We want to know what's delta G. Okay. Well... We have this equation, okay? We don't even have to rearrange anything. So it's negative n. n is the number of electrons being exchanged. If you look at the cell, or the reduction potential for these two half reactions, the zinc one had two electrons and the copper one had two electrons. The least common multiple between those is two because they're both two, so n is two. Like if you had had one that was like two and one that was three, the least common multiple is, sorry, three and two, the least common multiple would be six, which would mean that your n is six. You can actually just do it that way. You don't actually have to balance everything. Faraday's constant is, you know, a constant. So we're just gonna plug that in. Coulombs per mole. And I'm gonna write our voltage as joules per coulomb. Okay, so our moles cancel out. Coulombs cancel out, and we get joules. And delta G for this particular voltaic cell comes out to be negative 212, 260, 212,267 joules. I'm going to convert that to negative 212 kilojoules. Okay? Not too bad, right? This does actually point to stuff that we had to deal with in the last chapter. If a reaction is spontaneous, we said that delta G should be negative. So delta G will be less than zero. But because of this negative sign, that means that the voltage should be positive. So if you have a if you have a cell diagram and it comes out to have a positive voltage, we would expect it to be spontaneous as written. Okay? If you have a reaction that is non-spontaneous, we kind of expect, I don't know, the opposite of this. 
delta G will be um, greater than zero and E sub cell will be less than zero. So if the, easier, if, if the voltage is negative, honestly, all that really means is that you've screwed up and that your cathode and anode need to be switched. It's just spontaneous in the opposite direction. <laughs> okay, and if you're at equilibrium, delta G at standard conditions was zero and E sub cell will also be zero, which honestly means your battery is dead. <laughs> okay, so. Um, all right, I don't know what page number we're on. Give me just a sec. I think this is page 11. Okay. Well, continuing the trend that we saw in the last chapter is if you have two equations that are equal, you smash them together. Well, it turns out that delta G is equal to um, negative NF E sub cell, but it's also equal to negative RT natural log of KEQ, which we saw in the last chapter. Well, if we set those things equal, the negative signs cancel out, and we can rearrange things to solve for E sub cell. We basically divide NF to the other side and the negative signs go away. So what we end up with is this is RT over NF natural log of KEQ. So if you have the KEQ for a reaction, you can actually solve for the voltage as long as it's actually a cell diagram. But I guess just a label, well, let's circle all this and let's kind of label things. So for this, R equals 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Temperature just needs to be in Kelvin. N is the number of moles of electrons. And F equals 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Okay. Let's try an example where we do all of this stuff. Just to get experience at it. Well, let's say we have this half reaction. So we have copper as an electrode in a copper solution separated by this, and we have silver as the other half reaction. The thing that is lower on the the activity series will probably be the one on the right. And let's assume this is at standard condition, so 298 Kelvin. Okay, so let's first of all solve for the cell potential. Okay, well, we need to look all these things up on that table. Okay, so copper to copper two plus is positive point three four volts. Silver to silver plus is right here and it's positive point eight zero. And literally you just take the right minus the left. So E sub cell standard conditions equals positive 0 0.80 volts minus positive 0 0.340 or 0 0.34 volts. And we get a value of 0.46 volts. Yay, pretty easy. We use the table, everything's great. Okay. Delta G is minus NF E sub cell. Well, we need N. So if we look at the copper half reaction that has two electrons being exchanged, if we look at the silver half reaction, there's only one. The least common multiple between one and two is two. So that's how many moles of electrons would be exchanged here. F is a constant. And E sub cell we just calculated is positive 0.46 volts. So delta G for this particular reaction comes out to negative 88,766.2 joules, which 
couple of sig figs, I guess, here. This only has two, so negative uh, 89 kilojoules. Okay, nothing too bad. Not terrible yet. Okay, this reaction we're gonna need to rearrange to solve for KEQ. So I guess I'll show my work here. So that was E sub cell, delta G. We solve for KEQ, we need to solve for. So the reaction that's at the top of this page is that E sub cell equals positive RT over N F natural log of KEQ. We need to solve for KEQ. So to do this, we need to get rid of N, F, and R and T first, and then get rid of the natural log. So since this is in the bottom, we're gonna multiply. That will cancel that out. We need to divide by the RT because it's on the top. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit, but the natural log of KEQ equals all this stuff. Natural log of KEQ is essentially E sub cell times N times F and all of that divided by RT. To get rid of the natural log, we need to do E on both sides. So KEQ is equal to E to the <laughs> E raised to the E sub cell divided by NF. All of this is an exponent. So we plug everything in. We just solve for that, it's 0.46. N, we said was two. F is 96,485, or 845, sorry. No, 485, I had it right the first time. Which means I wrote it wrong up here. Wow, I'm just scribbling all over my notes here. Sorry guys. Uh, that's coulombs per mole. This is joules per coulomb, so the coulombs will cancel out, the moles will cancel out. We only have joules on the top. R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Um, and T is the temperature, which we said we're doing this at 298. 298 Kelvin. Man, I cannot write legibly today. Sorry, guys. Um, all the units basically cancel out, and we get e to the whatever that comes out to. And I get a value of KEQ equals 3.5 times 10 to the 15th. A little messy, but I mean, it would have been messy anyway, but I also wrote it messy, sorry. But this isn't terrible yet, right? It's, it's really just, it's not that bad. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you.